And so we made a second design and then a digital version because we had started to digitize or digitize the, uh, not digitize, the wrong word, draw the, the projects that were the most common. And then we had a presentation to the planners, to the faculty, to the lots of people. And each design was presented as a series of projects that would result in a 20-year future for the area. What should the hydrology government do? What should the transport people do? What the, like government is organized. That's one design. That's a second design. They're different. Believe me, they're different. And then we asked the planners, this is the chief regional planner and the chief city planner, which is the best design? And they didn't agree. And they started talking to each other. And the Italian students got to talking. Everybody started yelling at each other. It was very, very interesting. And then I asked, I asked a, sl a slightly different question. I said, which projects, not which plan is best, but which projects have, w have legs? Which ones recur again and again and again? So we did a frequency distribution, because we, we knew. We had a frequency distribution of which projects we use the most by the most plans. And I asked Juan Carlos, who's sitting there, kick him up on the computer in real time. And there it is. That's plan number seven. And all of a sudden, the, the, the people who made decisions for this city said, yeah, that's not a bad plan. Not a bad plan at all. It has projects, conserve the wetlands, protect the open water areas, increase biomass energy, increase a network of public transit around the wetlands, connect the habitats, and expand the city along the major roads but at lower density because that's what people really want. And that's today, and that's 20 years from now. Right? The fourth method is constraining. Here we're dealing with a client who has some idea of what they want, but really doesn't. This is the largest industrial zone in Italy. 25,000 people work here. Right here, off, my photo, off this slide, is the city of Padua. And in the 1960s, in the 1960s, the politics of the Veneto was basically a war between, not insulting anybody here, I hope, between a right-wing Catholic government and the communists. And the workers were communists mainly. And so they decided, yeah, well, they decided to move, this, to move the place out, move the workers out. And they created a park that's a no man's land. It's, it's basically drug people and prostitutes. A problem. So we, and they had to green this area. So we had the students go out there. They made diagrams. This time, Carl, Juan Carlos organized something that was very clever. The diagrams were all on a spreadsheet. So a student could go and ask which 20 projects would best allow connecting green spaces, which one would give an identity of a central park. And we made exercises by simply calling up a spreadsheet and overlaying the diagrams. In other words, the spreadsheet is the tool. The diagrams are the tool. The design comes out of the selection of the elements. It's not pencil and paper. It's not SketchUp. We had 15 designs. They were evaluated. And the outcome of the evaluation was the diagrams that they wanted to see going forward. We made plans from those groups. The plans were very sophisticated, staged, and with projects of all kinds. We brought them to Italy. Thousands of people saw them in the bank, on the main street, on the Via Corte. Then we had a quiet meeting with the students, the director of the park, the industry, and the mayor. And the mayor asked me, which is the best design? And I said, none of these. I said, I think this, 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 this. And then we had all those things up on a computer. And we said, well, let's see what that looks like as a design. Bop, 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 bop. And we made a design live in real time. And that design is on the Internet as the industry's commitment for their 50th anniversary to the city. And they are implementing it in their own way, making changes. So the exercise was to get them to figure out what they really wanted by narrowing their options. The last one is optimizing. This is La Paz. It's also on the Internet, the, the capital city of Baja California Sur in Mexico. 
a large group of people, terrible data, a whole set of integrated models, a computer program is going to make the design as an optimizing program. The scenarios were based on three alternative demographic and, and economic projections, three alternative public policy sets, and two alternative levels of public finance. There was a hell of a lot of sensitivity analysis. We knew how much development we wanted. We knew where it wanted to go on economically driven attractiveness models because Rob Farris, our economist, interviewed developers. There were different restrictions on land use as scenarios. There was an algorithm for allocation, a third generation derivative of Britton Harris's work from the 1960s that Mike Flaxman organized. And we started to do alternative designs. The computer was presenting them out. We had 16 of them. The design was the result of a process driven by economics. And a computer did the design. We did it, but the computer did the drawing. And we compared it with some very complicated models. Saline intrusion, groundwater change on different alternatives, which areas would get ugly, how much gross regional product would there be, how much per capita income would be, and then we had to make a decision. And here's the issue of decision making under optimization. Every one of these designs was an optimum, but based on different criteria and assumptions. Every one of them. We had 10 optimum solutions. So we had a public meeting, and the governor says, the hundreds of people, the governor says, I believe that economic, perf I, be I believe that economic performance is equal to environmental performance. Fine. Two indices, a spreadsheet, Equal means you're on this axis, and design number 10 is the one that is equal. But 9 has more economic return, and 2 is better environmentally. So what's the answer? The answer is we're not really sure that this is the best answer because we don't trust the governor. But we know the answer is somewhere in this triangle. And we know that it's not any of the policies here. And in a sense, the design is not what to do, but the design is what not to do, which in a governmental environment is probably even more valuable as the result of a design process. And that's the best design. But this is the thing that made the greatest impact. It's the index of developability. When you're not sure of what's going to happen, and we're not sure of what's going to happen. And this is the index of environmental quality. You saw one version of this yesterday, but they picked the wrong colors. Because when you intersect this, the map says if it's green, it means the conservationists want it, but the developers don't. So don't do anything. If it's red, it means the developers want it, but the conservationists don't. So let it go to development if it wants to. The real issue is brown, and this is a piece of land that was stolen by the president of Mexico for private use in the 1950s, and his grandson wants to build a billion-dollar resort. And because of this map, a public outcry came, and the mayor took the first 50 meters of coastline, coastline away as public land, and he's won in the Supreme Court. So this is now protected land. I'm finished. I am finished. This is the single greatest positive result of any study I've ever done based on the worst data. <laughs> and the whole study was done in four months. So how might the landscape be changed? This way, that way, that way, or that way. Those are design processes. My last word. Designing something is an art. It requires judgment. It is not a science, although it depends on science. There are no perfect formula, but there are methods. There is no universal toolkit, but there are tools. And you cannot copy an example, but you can gain experience. Thank you.